so this is the recipe we're using today for the dish soap and I calculated it using soapy.com rather than soap calc because I can do a dual line with soapy and I'll tell you the reason why I'm doing a split sodium and potassium hydroxide in a minute but basically we're doing 32% water uh, reduction 32 ounces of coconut oil and it has a 1% super fat and 2% citric acid they recommend usually the average is using one to three uh, percent citric acid and that's to help reduce uh, soap scum and just being uh, increases the cleaning power and 10 grams of citric acid neutralizes 8.42 grams of uh, potassium hydroxide and 6.2 grams of sodium hydroxide so we're going to have to calculate uh, how much citric acid we're using and calculate how much it's going to be neutralizing and then add that back to our recipe so that we don't end up with a higher super fat, which may not be the best if you're trying to, you know, break up grease and stuff on dirty dishes. So we're going to dissolve the citric acid in two times its water weight and then add that to the oils. Um, so here's the recipe, 32 ounces of coconut oil, 10.24 ounces of water, and then originally it's 3.48 ounces of lye, but I calculated it out and I need to add 0.24 ounces of more to counteract the citric acid should be neutralizing. And the same thing with the 3.62 ounces of potassium hydroxide, I have to add back in 0.22 ounces because that's how much the citric acid will neutralize. And so you might think, oh, look at that ratio. Um, there's less, it should, like I'm using a 60% lye sodium hydroxide and 40% potassium hydroxide, but the numbers are like greater for the potassium hydroxide. <clears throat> the reason for that is because my potassium hydroxide is at 90% purity, so I need to account for that. So that's why that ratio doesn't look like a 60-40, looks more like a 40-60. But anyway, so here's how I calculated how much I'm going to use. I did it in grams and ounces. And actually, I was like, if you see right here, uh, you, this was in grams and then I'd used ounces here. And I was like, oh no, I was gonna mess up my calculations, but I recalculated it, I converted everything to ounces and it was the exact same uh, percentage wise. So we're good to go. And that's it, I'll, let's start making this soap and I'll explain more about why I wanna use the dual lye. I'm going to start by just measuring out my citric acid which is 0 0.64 ounces. There we go. Now I'm just gonna add 1.3 ounces of water to dissolve it. I'll just go ahead and um, dissolve this. It dissolves pretty easily. And then I'll just set that aside and I'll measure up my coconut oil and melt it and we'll come back after that. So I'll be measuring 32 ounces of coconut oil. I'm just going to add the citric acid to the oils. So one of the reasons why I'm using dual lye is because each, the potassium and the sodium hydroxides each have their different qualities. So on a molecular level, the potassium hydroxide um, is smaller. So the molecules are smaller than like the sodium hydroxide so it can penetrate like the grease and oils on the pots and pans that you're cleaning a little quicker and then it rinses better with very hot water um, whereas sodium hydroxide is more exothermic and uh, it just it's not as it's not able to break up the grease as much as the potassium hydroxide and this is according to linda chambers she wrote an article on eclean mag.com. I can also put that link below too so you can read it for yourself. But she states, and I'm quoting, 
Using a product that contains both chemicals, which is the sodium, sodium and potassium hydroxide, is like getting the best of both. You will get a product with a better exothermic reaction than with potassium hydroxide alone, but you will have a faster penetration and better rinsing product than if you had just used sodium hydroxide. So those aren't my words, that's the research of Linda Chambers at ecleanmag.com. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my sodium and potassium hydroxide into my um, oils. Now I generally strain uh, my lye when I pour it, but it's pretty clear and I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it right into the oils. I've seen some people make dish soap too, um, using a 0% super fat and even a negative 1% super fat, which you could certainly do. I just didn't have the guts to do that. I like to, I like a buffer, but that's just me. The potassium hydroxide in here, it's gonna give it a less hard, um, the product won't be so hard as if it was just sodium hydroxide um, because, well, the potassium hydroxide, as you all know, is m more for liquid soap or liquid gel paste. So it's gonna be like a spongy soap. Spongy yet firm, like it will hold its shape. I'm just gonna mix my essential oil in now. I'm using one ounce of lemongrass. Again, the lemon and like the citric acid, it, it's just supposed to help uh, break up soap scum or reduce it anyway. It's so creamy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pour this right directly into my ramekins, which are six ounces large. That's the size I ordered. Um, you can order them in a smaller size. I believe they sell it in the four ounces. See how nice and thick and creamy that is. So, and they come in different colors too, which is kind of fun. I'm estimating this will make about six Gonna give it a little stir, stir it down. got a little bit left over. I'm just going to um, top these off. So this one looks like it could use a little more, as does this one. This one. And let me see, this one for sure. It made, this two pound batch made eight six ounce containers. And I'm just gonna make them a little bit prettier on the top. I'm just gonna do that. So you can see this is thickening up very fast, which is what you would expect with a coconut oil and a 1% super fat. So I'm just taking my skewer, just kind of blending the top to make it pretty. Er, just a little, a little uh, 
dust there. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm just going to let these sit at room temperature. I'm sure it'll go through its gel phase. I'm going to turn on my light. Nope. I've got a glare. Sorry about that. Here's a closer look of them. I just finished pouring them and I'm just showing you what they look like now and I'll come back periodically to see um, how they do, if they gel, if they don't gel. Um, I'll show you it all. 15 minutes later and you'll notice my soap is going through gel phase. 15 minutes later and you can see they're starting to cool off from their gel phase. So it's been a total of about 25 minutes or no 30 minutes ish so <clears throat> they're starting to cool down and nothing cracked some people are always concerned that the container that they're in will crack and some possibly could but these were designed to withstand baking temperatures so it can withstand a lot okay guys now we're going to test this soap out I made it seriously three to four hours ago. So I'm just gonna wear gloves, I normally don't. But we're gonna test this soap out. So I have it here, and I have my brush. And we're gonna test it out on this. Uh, I, have, I made a chicken pot pie, and it's kinda crunchy and greasy. Well, not too greasy, but you know, we're, let's just test this out. So I'm just gonna dampen my brush a little bit. And work up just a little bit of a lather. See at four hours old, it still is um, lathering well. Oh, some nice suds. There's just water in here. I didn't add any of my Dawn dish soap or anything. Like normally I wait for soap to cure before using it, but I'm not too concerned with dish soap. Well, for personal use anyway. There, that actually scrubbed pretty nice and seems to have cleaned pretty good. Okay, so there's just the first brushing. Um, feels regular like there's no coating or anything I'm just gonna use my the washcloth now just to get all the edges and the back side I never thought I'd be washing dishes on camera and I'll just give it a rinse and set it aside to dry actually let me bring that back for you so you can see it better. Voila, it's pretty clean. No residue on here. No oily residue. Um, feels good. So I say it's a success. <laughs>